Now let's start with this uh, following cubic polynomial f of x. It's a function with the following roots. I'm considering a cubic polynomial with uh, three roots at minus one, one, and three. So yeah, I'm imagining that polynomial, which uh, if you were to graph it, you can clearly see that it will have three roots at those designated points, minus one, one, and three. And probably the polynomial will look like this. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, you can use that graphing calculator to verify this result. How did I knew that the function, the graph of the function will look like this? Very easy, because if I were to set it equal to zero, I can find the three roots, find roots, right? So, and the three roots will come out as minus one from this one, x comes out as minus one, from this one, x will come out as one, and finally from this one, x will come out as three. So now if you wanted to write f of x in closed form, we can just expand it out, right? So factor out the uh, this whole expression. For instance, by just uh, inspecting the first two factors, x plus one and x minus one, we realize that this is just a difference of squares. Multiplying out will give me x squared minus one, and we still have an x minus three in the end. And finally, uh, foiling this out, it will give me x cubed minus three x squared minus x plus three. All right, so this is a pretty smooth function. It's a cubic function, uh, y equal, and we have shown the graph of this function. We found the roots to be minus one, one, and three, and these roots helped us in terms of drawing uh, the uh, this function. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is, I'm gonna just change this function just a little bit, so that it's not as trivial anymore. Uh, so, for instance, let our function be x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 2 instead of 3. Suddenly, the, uh, this function cannot be factorized nicely anymore. And indeed, if you were to use a website like Wolfram Alpha and indeed enter this function into Wolfram Alpha, the three roots will come out as follows. x one, the three roots, x2 and x3, and I'm just uh, writing the numbers from that. The first root will go slightly up to this number, 0, uh, 0.8608, uh, I believe. The second root will become 0 0.7459, and lastly, the third root is 3.1149. Yeah, so interestingly, by just changing the very last term of this function, it, 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 it changed the whole graph of the function. Now, suddenly our function looks like this, right? So this is the x-axis. So if you were to draw the function, the function will still look like what it was previously. But now, uh, uh, so maybe I can do it slightly smoother. There you go. But now the three roots are at three different points. Instead of minus one, it is in that uh, point zero point eight six here. This one is zero point seven five, or uh, so seven five, and then the last one is three point four, uh, three point eleven, very close to three point twelve. There you go. Now the question is, how does uh, a, a software or a calculator? Uh, would find these roots. So what goes through that process? So uh, there are multiple ways, but the key idea is uh, the tangent line. So there is a method uh, which goes into this calculation. We will learn this method, which is the Newton method. But let me first remind you of how to find the tangent line of a function. Um, and then we can go into uh, using the Newton method to find these uh, three roots, or at least one of them, for instance, 3.11. All right, so, but first let's uh, remember the idea of a tangent line. Let me just remind you of that. So the tangent line of a function, tangent line at a point at say x equals x zero of a function, function f, oops, 
f of x. So how do we, uh, oops, there you go, how do we uh, evaluate it? How do we calculate it? The key idea is to calculate the derivative of that function at that point. So suppose that you have this function, I don't know, so a function like, oops, this is too steep. So let's do it like this. Suppose that you would like to evaluate the uh, tangent of this function at that point here, x0. So you just look at the value of the function at that point, and you just draw a tangent line at that point. So um, it turns out that the slope of the function at x0 and the slope of the tangent line at that point are equal because, because the tangent line is tangent to the original function y equals f of x. So basically we can start with that observation. So the slope of the line, of line, of the tangent line, let's call that slope as m. It has to be clearly equal to the slope of the function y equals f of x evaluated at that point. And the, uh, clearly, the uh, the slope of the function at that point is simply the derivative of our function evaluated at that point. So finally, to come up with the actual equation of that point, of that tangent line, equation of the line, the tangent line, can be given by, well, we can, now that we know the slope of the tangent line, that red line, the slope, we can use the slope point uh, formula for the function which ends up being y minus f of x0 the function evaluated at 0 equals the slope m times x minus x0 or we can replace the m with um, with the derivative f prime of x0 uh, and then times x minus x0 is equal to y minus f of x sub 0 in the left hand side but you know what I'm just gonna leave the uh, y isolated on the left hand side and then on the right hand side we ha we are left with this expression so that turns out to be the equation of the tangent line so this is the tangent line tangent um, it turns out that this very line is at the heart of a lot of computations recursive computations that goes through your machine your calculators when these calculators either calculate um, like roots of complicated functions or even uh, like how do you calculate the square root of 40 for instance how do you calculate uh, cal uh, how does the machines calculate some really tedious uh, expressions well in the end what they do is they recursively define those tangencies and then they um, um, and then we, we have some approximation up to an error term. Most uh, calculators, simple calculators, their decimal places of accuracy is usually up to eight de decimal places. Awesome. So uh, let's quickly give an example before we directly dive into the previous problem of finding the actual root. So for instance, if you were to calculate the tangent line of the function y equals x squared uh, at say x equals 1 at that point so we need the tangent line of that function at that point well first things first we know that this is simply a parabola so if i were to draw the parabola y equals x square so this point would be 1 1 oops 1 1 and so basically uh, our parabola will go through that point as well as the origin, the point zero, zero, right? And our goal is to find the tangent line at that point. So I can just go ahead and uh, label it with a different color, some markers. So suppose that this is the tangent line. I would like to find the equation of this line. It's very easy. First we can, uh, well, let's just directly use the formula we just derived, right? So uh, y is equal to, let's evaluate the function at the point x equals 1 because that's our value of x sub 0 so evaluated at x equals 1 we get that this is simply 1 squared plus now we need the derivative of our function right f prime and then evaluated at the point x equals 1 again the derivative of the function y equals x squared is just 2x so therefore uh, plugging in the value 1 we will get 2 times 1 does that make sense so let me just go ahead and make that calculation elsewhere. Y prime is simply 2x. And that's 
that's obviously clear because x squared is just a polynomial it's a quadratic and when you take the derivative of that function all you do is you just bring that exponent to the front as a coefficient like we did here and then reduce the value of the exponent by one and that's exactly that, that invisible one there so it's really 2x and now when we plugged into our formula tangent line equation formula all we did is we evaluated at the point x equals 1 finally we need to multiply it by x minus uh, minus x0 which is evaluated at the point 1 so maybe I should just change this to x sub 0 there we go and sure enough that comes out as 1 plus 2 times x minus 1 or if you want to further clean this expression up a little bit 2x um, just 2x actually <laughs> uh, the uh, sorry 2x uh, minus 2 minus 1 I should say sorry for that 2x minus 1 there you go not surprising if you set this equal to 0 it will give you the x intercept of that function y uh, sorry x and y x and y so therefore uh, the equation of this thing is y equals 2x minus 1. Awesome. Now that we know uh, what the tangent line means and how to calculate it, let's go back to our question. Okay, so here was the, the question again. Our goal is to calculate that, that third root uh, 3.11 or to be more exact 3.1149. So what we can do is um, we can start with a random guess. So suppose that I start with the random choice of say 5 for instance. Let's just go ahead and use a red marker. Suppose that 5 is this point over here. Uh, you can start with any random point. So 5 evaluated at our function. We can even calculate the value of our function at that point. If I were to plug in 5 into our function now here this one. 5 cubed would be 125. Let me write it over here actually. f of 5 would have been 5 cubed minus 3 times 5 squared minus 5 plus 2. And indeed this is just equal to 125 minus 75 minus 5 plus 2. 125 minus 75 is equal to 50 minus 5 is 45 plus 2 is 47. So our function evaluated at that point 5 is equal to 47. All right, so what is our method? Our method says the following, a very neat result. It says that all you do uh, is to draw a tangent line at that point. And wherever it hits the axis, you can uh, label it as, say, for instance, x sub 1. If the original point is x sub 0, that point is x sub 1. And then the method says that recursively keep repeating the, the process. So we just evaluated the value again at that point. We need to figure out what is the value of the question. And then, based on that, draw the new tangent line. And then find the next point, x2. But by now you will realize that x2 is significantly close to 3.1. You will be given an error term. So for instance, um, the, the calculators, the simple calculators, they have eight decimal places of accuracy. So you will stop that recursion uh, when you have enough uh, decimal places of accuracy in your calculation, basically. All right, so having said that, let's quickly go to business. So uh, let, let me just go ahead and uh, clarify this graph. So this is the green graph is the original one, and the blue one is a tangent line. It's a straight line tangent to our graph at that point, x equals 5. All right, uh, so let's just, um, you know what, let me just, instead of giving you the di formula directly, let me just go ahead and, so let me hide the, the, the actual answers here. Our goal is to come up with this number. So what I will do is the following. Let me carry the original uh, equation of this pol polynomial, minus x, uh, minus, okay, let me be careful here, minus 3x squared minus x plus 2, minus 3x squared, 3x squared minus x plus 2. All right, so uh, our goal again is to just uh, derive that point 3.11. So let me just for the time being just uh, erase it. So pretend that we've never seen it. But uh, so let's see how, how good our approximation will end up. Instead of giving you the actual formula, like I said, so let's just go ahead and derive the actual formula. So my attention this time is on this, uh, let me just go ahead and use that, on this uh, uh, right triangle right here. So this is a right triangle. So there's a right angle over here. I'm going to actually calculate 
the slope of our line, which is obviously equal to the derivative of our function evaluated at the point x0, which is 5 in our example. So the slope will come out as f sub prime of 5 is equal to, so that's what we need. But first, let's go ahead and calculate the derivative of our function, which is 3x squared minus 3 times 2 is a 6x minus 1. And now let's go ahead and plug in the value of 5 which will give us the slope. So 3 times 5 squared minus 6 times 5 minus 1. And indeed, that will come out as 25 times 3 is 75. 75 minus 30 is 45. 45 minus 1 will be 44. All right. Now that I know the slope, well, slope is simply rise over run. I'm just going to do this once. Once I get the formula, uh, we will just directly keep using the formula, but I want to make sure I show you where the formula comes from. So if you look at rise over run, so the rise is uh, the, the this distance, which is the this whole distance, 47 minus 0, that's just the 47, right? 47 divided by run is, let me actually write it out before I uh, rise over run, that's the slope, oops, run. That's the slope. Let's call it m for the time being. Or actually, we evaluated it, right? So it is just f prime of 5, right? Okay, rise over run, which is simply 47 divided by the run, which is x0 minus x1. x0 is a 5 minus x1. So from here, uh, given that f uh, prime of 5, we already evaluated, we can plug it into here. So that would imply that 44 is equal to 47 over 5 minus x1. We can just uh, do a cross multiplication. 44 uh, times 5 minus x1 is equal to 47. And now you can just use the simple algebra techniques to just um, distribute, I guess, 220 minus 44 x1 is equal to 47. Move the 47 to the right-hand side and move this expression to the right-hand side. Left-hand side, right-hand side. So 220 minus 47 would be 180, 173, I guess. So x1 will come out as 173 over 44 in the end. And if you have a calculator, I have a calculator in front of me. So let me just go ahead and do the calculation. So I have 173 divided by 44. That gives me an initial value of 3.93. Now, you got to admit that we're doing pretty good here, right? So why is that? Because our goal is to get to that root. Uh, let's call it R, for instance. So our initial starting point is pretty good. We started with the point 5. It, this was just an estimate. We didn't know exactly what that root was. So uh, knowing that I already started with something that I knew that uh, the roots, I knew that by just changing the last term here, the, the, the function will just uh, will just slide a little bit, but not too much. So I, I kind of guess that the answer should be close to 3. As a result, 5, my, five was my uh, initial starting point guess. All right, so this is a 5. And after one iteration of this process, we already got 3.93. So do you guys see where we found that number from? So when you uh, when you look back carefully, we can even see where it comes from. So we, we started with this expression. 5 was our initial point, which was x sub 0. Let me go ahead and actually along the way uh, derive the formula. So let me do it on the side here. So really the formula comes from the following formula. Let me leave some space over here just to write the final output. But it seems the formula comes from f sub f uh, f prime of evaluated at x0 is equal to f of x0 divided by uh, 5 was our value of x0, x0 minus x1. I can just uh, go ahead and uh, after cross multiplication, that will give me x0 minus x1 is equal to f of x0 divided by f prime of x0 and finally multiplying both sides of this equation by minus 1 that will give me x1 minus x0 is equal to minus f of x0 divided by f prime of x0 this turns out to be extremely convenient formula so that is the formula that we can use for our recursion purposes so when it is time to calculate x2 recursively x2 would be x2 minus x1 we can find it from this form or actually you know what let's just also move that x0 minus x0 to the right hand side so i think it's even better formula now 
x0 minus. Okay, there you go. And as a result, when I want to calculate x2, it will simply be x1 minus f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. Do you guys see that? For instance, if I were to calculate x3, x2 minus f of x2 divided by f prime of x2. So if you know the previous point, the result of the previous iteration of that recursion, then the next iteration follows from those formulas. It's all I do is each time I just replace the point with what we got in the previous iteration. So now that we know x1 came out as it is, uh, so we can go ahead and apply the iteration here and then find the value of x2. You will see that we will get closer and closer to that true root, which by using a, a software like Wolfram Alpha, you can check, for instance, the Wolfram Alpha website, Wolfram Alpha, uh, to actually find the actual root, right? So uh, let's see if, uh, how close we can get to that number. Um, well, now that I know uh, x1, after one iteration, we started with x0 equals 5, right? So that was our starting point. Maybe I, shan I should write it out here. x0 equals 5 was our starting point. With that, what we did is, uh, now that we have the formula, let me just go ahead and show you one more time. 5 minus, all we did is evaluated the function at 5. When we plug in 5 into the function, we got 47 here, divided by plugging in 5 in the, into the derivative, uh, the derivative function was this, plugging in 5, we got the 44. And that's exactly uh, the value that we found, 3.93. So now for the case x2, uh, all we do is we will go ahead and plug in that value of 3.93 back into the formula and see what we get. So when we plug in 3.93, so 3.93 minus f of x1, we need to evaluate the function at the point 3.93. So this is the value of our function. So all you do is just plug in 3.93 into this function. Uh, let me, um, well, let's just do it over here, I guess. Let me open some space here. Given that f of uh, x is what it is, we can evaluate it at 3.93. Remember that our function is x cubed minus 3x squared minus x. Okay, so 3.93 cubed minus 3x squared, so 3.93 squared minus, oops, minus x, which is 3.93, and then plus 2, right? So that was, let me double check, so x cubed minus 3x squared minus x, so this is x cubed, right? So x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 2. That was exactly the expression that we started with. All right, so, um, I can just remove that. It's just a simple calculation now to plug it into this in a calculator. For instance, I have a calculator in front of me, 3.93. If I were to cube it, that comes out as 60.7. Let's have it up to two decimal place, for instance, minus three times uh, 3.93 uh, squared comes out as 15.44. And we still have 3.93 plus 2.00. And now the rest is just to finish up the calculations. For instance, I'll multiply this by 3. This one comes out as 4. Let, let's do it one more step just so that everybody is clear. So that middle section is 15.44 times 3 is 46.33 minus 3.93 plus 2. And now we can add up these values, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Plus... 60.70 plus 2 minus 3.93 comes out as 12.44. We can just go ahead and plug it into here, 12.44 now, right? So now in the denominator, we need to do pretty much a similar thing. So we need to calc evaluate uh, the, the derivative of the function at that point x1. Now x1 is remembered from the previous step, it was 3.93. All right, so the derivative of our function is uh, this monster here. So let's just first carry it down there and then let's evaluate it at the point 3.93. 3x squared minus 6x. So f of 3.90, f prime of is a 3, 3.93 square. So 3x squared minus 6x minus 1, minus 6 times 3.93 plus plus 1. That's it. Now let's go ahead and calculate the value of the function over here. 3.93 squared times 3. The first term comes out as 
46.33 minus 6 times 6 times 3.93 is simply equal to 23.58. And finally, adding a 1 to it, uh, that will give us uh, the derivative as plus 46.33 plus 1. 23.75 it is 23.75 now we can go ahead and plug it into our function 23.75 and now long behold let's see what comes out as a result so um let me just do this calculation pretty quickly so the second term this whole thing comes out as 0 0.52 so 3.93 minus 0 0.52 and that whole thing comes out as plus 3.93 uh 3.41 now this is decidedly uh closer and closer right so <laughs> you guys can imagine that 3.41 if we were to apply the the uh, recursion one more time we will be yet one step closer to the actual result which is like we said uh, it was 3.1149 so let me just go ahead and one last time do the iterations and so you guys can see well uh, how, how the things proceed from there 3.41 minus pretty much the same idea so on the numerator again we need to evaluate the function at that new point 3.41 this was pretty um uh like uh, time consuming for us but for a machine it is just a few seconds right for a calculator so let me just go ahead and evaluate it, the, the value of the function at the point 3.41 we need to first cube it then minus 3 times 3.41 square minus uh, 3.41 and then finally add a 2 to it so let's just go ahead and do that let me go do it over here if you guys want you can you guys can do it over there so the first term is 39.65 minus the second term comes out as 3.41 squared times 3 34.88 minus and then the last two terms will be minus 1.41 if i'm not mistaken so finally uh, that thing uh, minus 1.41 plus uh, 39.65 equals 3.36 all right, now that I know the value of the function evaluated there, I need to also evaluate the derivative of our function. It will be needed. So 3.36 is this numerator here. I still need the denominator. So we will pretty much use the same formula, except that replace 3.93 with 3.41 now, right? So it's pretty much the same uh, ideas. So 3 times 3.41 squared uh, minus 6 times uh, 3.41 uh, plus 1. And that will be equal to, let's quickly do it, 3.41 squared uh, times 3. That comes out as 34.88, 34.88 minus, so 6 times 3.41, that's 20.46. And we still have a plus 1. So finally, this comes out as, if you do the additions, 34.88 plus 1. I think it's 15.42. Now we can go ahead and plug that into the denominator there. So there's a parenthesis there for 15.42. And this thing comes out as, okay, so let's just do the calculations uh, times 3.36 plus minus plus uh, 3.41. It comes out as 3.19. So in three iterations we were able to approximate it all the way to 3.19 indeed what we can do is we can um, go ahead and construct an excel model where we can do this significantly faster so in the next video we will uh, continue with this uh, example and show you how you guys can actually formulate this on an excel worksheet and do the same thing but clearly this procedure this newton method is very very effective in finding in as as little as three calculations we were able to starting with x uh, our starting point was x0 equals 5.00 we were able to approximate all the way to 3.19 given that the actual root is uh, 3.1149 I, I i would say that we're very close if we had a chance to uh, use the recursion five or six times we would have been extremely close to the uh, to the actual uh, result all right so hope you guys enjoyed this